as believers in the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is that Allah gave him the final, the lasting, and the most powerful of all miracles. Which is what? The Qur'an. As a result, if we were to appreciate this Qur'an as a miracle, right now most of us, we appreciate it as a religious text, as a book of guidance, as a book of knowledge. We appreciate those things. But if we add it to our appreciation, its appreciation, its taste as a miracle of Allah, as profound words that are supposed to change lives, just by their impact, their power, then we would have an entirely different sensation of Iman. The, the Iman before this and the Iman after this is two different things. You see, when the Sahaba heard Qur'an, they heard two things at the same time. They heard a reminder, advice, guidance, all of that. At the same time, they also experienced a miracle from Allah. When we hear Qur'an today, at the most, what do we hear? We hear the reminder. What's missing? The miracle. The other side. I want you to visualize that you lived, I don't know, thousands of years ago in some society. And when you lived in that society, you had a neighbor. And your neighbor knocked on your door one day, and he says to you, um, an angel came to my house. He told me that I'm the messenger of God. And that I'm supposed to deliver this message to all of mankind. I've already delivered it to my family, and they've rejected me. And since you're my neighbor, the right of the neighbor is that I tell you. And by the way, I'm a messenger of God, and everything I say isn't actually my own words. They're words of who? Of God, of the, of the divine, let's say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, they're words of Allah. And following me actually doesn't mean that you're following me, it means you're obeying Allah. There are two problems with this statement. The neighbor who opens the door and listens to all of this says, wait, so first of all you're asking me to believe that an angel talked to you? <laughs> 